Hi, I'm Ross Mayfield, investment strategy analyst at Baird, and we are back for another weekly update with our friends at Strategus. Today, we are lucky enough to be joined by managing director and head of fixed income research, Tom Titsuris. Tom, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Ross. Yeah, thrilled to talk to you. Um, I want to start with, you know, this recent kind of sell-off softness in equities. Um, what are you seeing in the bond market that either kind of confirms this move or gives some hints or insight as to what's happening in the stock market, whether it's credit spreads or what's happening in treasuries? Is there anything you're seeing on the fixed income side that gives some clarity into what's happening on the stock side of the market? Well, there is. And and, and let's be uh, uh, blunt here. There are three reasons why you're seeing softness first emanating from the bond market and then transitioning to the equity market. Two of those reasons are very transparent. We can see them very clearly. That is number one, you've seen inflation continue to print hotter than the market expects and hotter, hotter than the Fed is comfortable with. And very specifically, you've seen headline inflation CPI, three and a half percent core C, uh, CPI, we'll call it get uh, somewhere around three, seven, three, eight, three point eight percent These are numbers that are still well above the Fed's expectations. And they're certainly too hot for the Fed to cut interest rates in the first half of this year. So that expectation of easing has come off the table. That's point number one. Point number two, which we can also very clearly see, is Treasury supply. Treasury supply continues to be gargantuan. $2 trillion deficits. These are just very difficult for the market to digest. In order for the market to digest them, you have to see uh, Treasury yields inch a little bit higher at auction, and that does put downward pressure on all assets. Now, this has been happening along with the inflation data throughout the year. So this is nothing new. What is new is that underneath the surface, which we can't really see very easily, is that we've entered what we call a liquidity air pocket. What we mean by that is everybody who owes money on their taxes usually waits until March or April to pay. And what they do is you typically, you pull money out of your bank account, you pull money out of your money market fund, you pull money out of your municipal bond fund, and you wait until March or April to do that. And so we have entered a seasonal period where there's liquidity coming out of the system. You can't really see this on the surface, but you can see this if you look at things like bank reserves, you look at things like money market funds, and you can see that there's liquidity coming out. What this does is from middle of March, to the end of April, it exposes the bond market to what is otherwise the natural ebb and flow of the economic data. So you're getting a period where we call it a liquidity ear pocket or a soft patch, where the market, the bond market, is unusually exposed to what has been otherwise bad economic and bad supply data. To make a long story short, this has gotten to be so pronounced the sell-off in the bond market with 10-year yields reaching as high as 4.7%, that it has begun to soften the equity markets and the credit markets. The good news is, though, we're now entering, or we will begin to enter, that seasonal strong patch where cash is, is absolutely enormous at the Treasury. The Treasury's cash holding by the end of April is looking like it's going to be close to a trillion dollars. That will slowly decrease as the Treasury pumps cash into the market. So what was a seasonal soft patch of liquidity with liquidity coming out for tax payments will transition into a strong patch in May and June. And you should start to see, and we're in fact, we're already starting to see treasury yields inching lower. But I have to caution, the underlying fundamentals that are driving the move are not getting better. The inflationary data is probably not going to get a whole heck of a lot much better throughout the rest of the year. It should improve a little bit between now and June. But there's going to be inertia to a second wave of inflation next year because the labor market remains strong and the supply pictures are just temporarily being pushed into the future. Those are going to continue to hang over both bond and equity markets for, for, for years to come. Well, let's finish on that because I, you know, I noticed that you have started writing in basically a new series of reports that specifically focuses on treasury auctions and treasury supply. Why Why now or why today is that a more important piece of the picture than maybe it was a couple of years ago? And what's the near-term outlook or intermediate-term outlook for Treasury supply and how that impacts yields? Yeah, so there's a few reasons for that, and I'll try to be, be quick on this. But when you're the world's reserve currency, your debt load does not matter, but your deficit does. Now, in the last decade, we had large deficits and we had a large debt load, but we had low interest rates and we had a Federal Reserve 
which was continuing to buy bonds. Today, we have high interest rates, even bigger deficits in a Federal Reserve, which is pulling back from the bond market. So all of that supply pressure now becomes acutely painful for the bond market when in the last decade, it didn't matter. And so what you're seeing is every auction gets a little worse, a little worse. We look at things like bid to cover ratios. We look at things called the tail or the stop through. A tail means that the auction was weaker once you got to auction versus what was expected an hour or a day before. So all of those little measures are internally getting a little bit worse, telling us that the bond market is having a difficult time digesting the supply. And a, a bond market that cannot digest treasury supply is one that is eventually going to lead to weaker risk assets around the globe. Well, Tom, we'll, we'll look forward to talking to you again soon and getting some updates there, because as you mentioned, this is a big year for, for that sort of theme. So thank you so much for the insights as always, and hope to talk again soon. Yep. Thank you for having me.